When Ashmead School opened its doors back in 1952, it was one of the most modern schools in the UK. Today, former pupils and teachers return to reminisce about their experiences here. Well, we were blessed in a way because a lot of the schools were still Victorian, nothing like the futuristic design of Ashmead was in 1952. However, the school did not stand the test of time and its buildings have been continually replaced over the past three decades. Our 60s and 70s were good. The beginning of the 80s, you could see the writing on the wall. This will be the last chance to bid farewell to the school before complete demolition takes place to make way for a new academy. My God, you haven't changed! <laughs> Nick Chalicum wow. and David Nugent attended Ashmead when it first opened in 1952. Hey, oh, God. Good to see you. Good to see, see you, Nick. How many years? Oh, I stood in the hall. I thought 50 years ago <laughs> was the last time I stood in that hall. What happened to... Yes. The bike sheds and junior school yeah, buildings. Yeah, it's changed somewhat. And our playground. Yeah, yes. And the gymnasium's gone. It's all gone. All but one of the original 50s buildings fell victim to concrete cancer and have been replaced. Yeah, and it's going to even change even more. Look at that futuristic building they're doing for them. I think it's all changed. This was the upper school. Upper school, three storeys. Yes. And that, that's the one which was obviously demolished because of the problem with the concrete. Yeah. Well, they all of them. Yeah, well, they, they all were, and yes. down there was a two-storey block, which was the uh, lower school. Yes. In, and in, go on. Building school, this area. Well, building school there. So well, that's a new building, yeah. that's a new building. The, the construction after hasn't followed any theme. There's no pattern, is there? No, it's no just like, at all. like odd, odd buildings. They used to make this available for the people who are interested in sport or the playing fields during break time. Because I used to come out and throw the discus yeah. even in the lunch break. Yeah. There's no balls no, out here, no, no one's playing, no one's, they're no. just standing around as though... Uh, no, they don't seem to be. There's nothing for them to do. David and Nick go inside the only building still standing from their days. The main hall. <laughs> did, you, did you do drama when you were here? Do you remember that lectern? It looks a bit tired, but it's, it's had lots of things said across. There we are, look. Oh, yeah. Presented to the school in 1952. Yes. And, uh, just needs a little attention. Yeah. But that was probably I'd the boss. It's worth keeping. Mr. Winterton thumping on it and <laughs> demanding discipline. Gosh, I never thought I'd stand here. Again, yeah. yeah. It's wonderful. Oh, this is a good selection you've got here, Nick. This is real nostalgia, this. As soon as we came to Ashmead, they, they had this nice little book, which was bound. Yes. You're a brave man to bring your report out. Yeah. Showing its age a little bit, but that's not bad. That's right, yeah, yeah. And uh, in here were all the, the subjects and the, the teacher's comments. That's right. It yeah. says, a very willing and cheerful lad uh, who has it in him to do really well if he works just that little bit harder. <laughs> you could never do enough for them. In our day, the teachers were looked up to. They were like doctors, policemen, who else would it be? They were all, yeah. um, I'm going to say upper class, that's no, not what I want to say. Authoritarian yep. people, you know, they're, yep. they're, they're people in authority, you, you just respected. That's right. You know, by rote. There's a teacher I hold in high esteem because uh, when we remember when we first, first year at school, he came into the class, the first class, and there was an uproar like, children in classes and he stopped the class and he spent the whole lesson caning the whole class and uh, he just from that moment on he never had a disciplinary problem and, no, it, and um, it never harmed anybody yeah but um, they, they, they won't get away with it nowadays it's a shame because I don't think it harms <laughs> don't think it hurts anybody no, no. no.
In the 1960s, both Robin Sharp yeah, and Timothy Blair were PE teachers at Ashmead. No idea. That was the caretaker's office down there yes. with the boilers that always kept going wrong. <laughs> uh, failed to heat the swimming pool when, uh, when we yes. most needed it. Changing rooms were yeah, the all this here. So yeah. Yes, there's certainly been a good demolition job here. So the so hole in the wall here, over there is there. probably where the pipes came through for the swimming it? swimming pool heating. Could be. I should think that's the that's the end of the swimming pool, yes. Yes. Uh, which was here in the changing area for was, the PE was department here. was just here. Now, 60s and 70s were good beginning of the 80s you could see the writing on the wall as far as PE not being big enough a academic subject. subject no it was less and less because it didn't give you academic success so it was deemed not to be not to be necessary and the PE staff Robin left uh, the PE staff went down from five full-time to one and a half uh, which made things quite tight we couldn't couldn't quite achieve what we had achieved in the no. past uh, and then girls came to the school, which uh, added a different dimension to PE, um, of which I, <laughs> I, I found quite difficult. Uh, uh, but there we are, uh, times change. Yes, yeah, certainly the, the buildings, apart from this monstrosity here, look very, very nice um, and, and modern as opposed this to the concrete block that we had Vic before. Victorian post-war. But that wasn't there when we were here. Well, look at that place over there. <laughs> Space That's age. all on the school field. Well, I'm blowed, yeah. Yes. And where that building is now, there were long jump pits and rugby yes, pitches, lo soccer pitches. Long jump pitches. pits were over there. Days gone by. Yeah, oh well. The 1970s was to see a vast change in school life at Ashmead. Especially in attitudes towards education and authority. I arrived here, I believe, completely naive to the world. Didn't know anything about sex or drugs or smoking or alcohol. Completely unknown to my world. And yet in the next six years that was filled in very nicely. All that peace. No, I'm guessing that that would have been a revelation compared to the 60s and a revelation compared to the 50s. And probably the respect that we held the teachers in probably was tailing off to more like it is today, I suspect. Ken Bruce and Steve Bell were pupils at Ashmead in the 1970s. Compared to the 1950s, the school was a radically different place. I only stayed a year because um we weren't doing anything, were we? Uh, we? We had lessons that just did, just turned into political debate. Yeah. And uh, after a year, I left. But you're right. I remember the teachers were quite politically motivated as well. They're all very strong left-wing yeah. activists. Every yeah. one of them. Yeah, yeah. it was uh, yeah. quite strange. Yeah. Big industrial change. Three-day week, and we used to start really early and finish about lunchtime. And then what did we do? Gone downtown, wasted our time. Yeah, yeah. To... Coffee shops, running around the city. Stephen Ken got away with a lot as pupils. With the cane abolished, teachers had to use other methods of discipline. I got detention a few times, and you weren't allowed to talk, and you just sat there for an hour, and uh, Jude would say at the start of the lesson, I want an essay on the inside of the ping pong ball, or an essay on E equals MC squared, and you weren't allowed to talk, weren't allowed to rustle the paper, and he used to walk around and his cigarette was getting... And he's, <laughs> everybody the entertainment asleep. value of watching yeah, that. <laughs> and that was the entertainment value, was trying to see if the ash would fall off his cigarette. Mr. Silverthorn used to smoke a pipe in class. I don't and remember that. He said the whole room used to be covered in Stinky smoke. Smoke. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's hanging off, hanging off the Where's ceiling. Where's the health issue in that, guys? <laughs> yeah. But then they were being phased out by the sort of new age hippie type. You're right, because we had Jim, the chemistry teacher, he had long curly Jim, hair. Jim him. Maple. Right, Ned must have had long hair. So there must be some sort of generational split between yes. the two of them. Yes, I definitely. Think, in that respect. And we all knew their first names. Whereas the That's old... right, we never knew the guys first names of the old boys. No. Actually, I wonder if that's also when the caning stopped as well. Even though school life changed radically in the 1970s, some things 
like health and safety, was slow to catch on. Someone got speared with a javelin in the playing field. I should yeah. laugh. We used to, used to the they sand speared with a javelin. The sand pit was at the very <laughs> far end. They let us have javelins. Yes, <laughs> and people were doing the hop, skip, and jump into the sand pit. Well, well, so were people thrown javelin from the other I got this wild image and of it, went, it, it went straight through the Is there a possibility that they were aimed at? And the health and safety issues, I presume today, would stop us doing it. It wouldn't have got past any risk assessment. No. <laughs> I'm sure I don't remember anything being safe. Today, there is not only a new building, but also a new name. The John Medeski Academy. So what we've got are four learning pods. So we'll have new technologies, science, mathematics, graphics, design, within each of the pods. So they're not uh, discrete, they're all integrated into different curriculum areas, okay? The idea was to sort of um, try to get a really nice feeling of, of young people not being policed, but actually become independent learners. There'll be a fully modularized course that they'll follow. And, and some students will do very well and they'll move at a quicker pace than other students that need lots of support. We're working on interests, aptitudes, um, as well as what people need for life skills when they go outside. I think it's also about making this a community campus. The building isn't uh, about 38 weeks of the year for children 11 to 18. The philosophy is 52 weeks of the year, 24-7, that our community can access these wonderful facilities. The youth of today are no different to 50 years ago. The pressures are just far, far greater for them than they were when I went to school. Media, you know, having to look good, breakup of the family as a unit. You know, these are all additional pressures that perhaps 50 years ago weren't quite so strong. And now the final batch of students in these buildings also plan to share their memories with future generations. We thought it'd be a nice idea to um, barrier time cancel, so from 100 years now, that is 2106, that children can open the time capsule and see how it was like for us in our year. And we wanted our R&B put into there, because that is the big thing at the moment. So the Hips Don't Lie song is the song of the year by Shakira. Everyone has danced to it at parties and things like that. So it had to be in the time capsule no matter what. That just had to be the song in there. Although the buildings are about to be demolished, just a few things can be put in the time capsule. It's only the strongest memories that will live on in the minds of the pupils and teachers. Gosh, I never thought I'd stand here. Again, yeah. yeah. It's wonderful. That's right, we never knew the guys' first names, the old boys. No. I mean, Dewey. Yeah, Dewey, that was it. It was a, a, a terrific place to teach. Mr. Silverthorne used to smoke a pipe in class, and he said the whole room used to be covered in smoke. <laughs> <laughs>